Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through CSS website layout. In this video tutorial, you guys will understand what is a website and how different elements of a website comes together to create a website look more attractive to the user. Also, we'll see how we can use CSS in that particular website. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's start with CSS website layout. As we all know, there are certain elements present in a website. By elements, I mean we have navigation bar, we have header, we have content, we have footer. So in this video, we are going to see how we can use CSS to place those elements on a web page in order to make our web page look more attractive to the user. Fine. So basically there are two different types of website and it totally depends on how which type of website you are creating. So we have static websites and we have dynamic websites. So a static website is which remains the same every time for every user. So like if you are going through a website where you can read articles or blogs, so it refers to a static website. On the other hand, a dynamic website is something which changes as per the user. The data changes and it happens dynamically. There is no one who will handle that data, but it will change according to the user. So there are two different types. This is a long discussion between static and dynamic websites. It's just to let you guys know that we what we are going to do is we are going to create the layout for a static website right now. So for by layout, what I mean is we are going to include certain HTML elements and we'll see how we can place them on a web page with the help of CSS. So without any further delay, let's move on to the programming part and we'll create the layout directly. So in order to understand which different elements are present, we are going to create every element one by one. So the first element we are going to create is going to be a header. Fine. So to create a header, what we are going to do is you already can see we have a VS code and a web page look over here. So the live server is on and whatever we'll write here in the HTML part will be reflected in the web page. So what we are going to do first is we are going to take a div tag in the HTML part and then we are going to use a class with for that div tag. So let's say the class we are going to create is header and what we are going to do is we are going to create a header. Just write a heading inside it. So let's say this is a heading. Fine. So here you can see the heading. Let me remove this heading from here so that you guys will can understand what is a header. So a header is basically that particular part of a website where websites usually place their logos. But now these days, websites use the logo in their navigation bar. So header is not that much used. But yeah, header stays there in every website, almost every website, previous websites, we can say. So the style. So what we are going to do is we already have a CSS file over here. What we are going to do is we are going to style now. So let's do one thing, we'll keep some things common like the margin. So let's say we are going to keep the margin as zero for the whole body. Now let's style the header element. So here you can see in the HTML part, the class is header. We don't have to do anything, just write here header. And I hope you guys must have understood the concept of display property and grid blocks and flex box. So all these layouts we are going to use in a upcoming videos so if you haven't watched the videos on display property grid layout and flexbox so guys please go through them to understand this particular topic much better so let's say we are going to set a background color let's set it beach and here you can see the background color and now what we have to do is we have to just insert the padding padding is let's say 20 pixels and here you can see this is the header part fine now what we are going to do is we are going to align the text at the center. So this is our header. Let's change the heading over here to header so that it will be easy for you guys. I'll write here header part. And here you can see this is the header part of our website or web page. This is not dynamic or not responsive as well. We'll make it responsive with just one line of code, one or two lines of code. So don't worry about it. Now we are done with the header. The next thing we have to do is we have to include the navigation bar. The navigation bar is the most important 
content or element of any web page what a navigation bar does it consists of several links or buttons so to make the user navigate through the whole website if you guys have ever been through any website you must have noticed the navigation bar it is generally a bar from where we can navigate the user to different locations of a web page now so what we are going to do is we are going to create the navigation bar so for navigation bar what we are going to do is we are going to write here inside the HTML part first so what we are going to do is we are going to write here div class we are going to use so let's say we are going to write here class nav and we are what we are going to do is we are going to add three links just write here href and just add these links fine okay we have to write here like this and we have to close this anchor tag fine fine we are done save it and just you can see the link over here so let's add some more links what we are going to do is we are going to add three links over here now what we are going to do is we are going to style a navigation bar so first thing first what we are going to do is we are going to style the top navigation bar so the top top side of a navigation bar so what we'll do here is we'll write over here dot top not dot nav because this is the class we have used so dot nav will write over here overflow will use the first property overflow will keep it as hidden and then what we are going to do is we are going to use a background color for a what we can say navigation bar let's use a different color this time so i'll choose one beach for now and i'll change this color to some other color like yellow so here you can see this is the basic navigation bar what we are going to do is we are going to change the font color as well okay we have a lot of colors present here you guys can use any color of your choice save it and here you can see we have all the links present here we'll change it in a moment now what we are going to do is we are going to style the links present so the, here we have three links we'll remove the line from there we'll use the text decoration property for that so just write here dot nav is the class and inside this what we have done is we have used link so just write dot nav space a and just keep space over here so that it will be easy for you guys to understand so we'll write over here float as left and display display plays a vital role i'll say it again and you guys must have understood the concept of display property we can use display as a lot of values display property has like absolute and we have other properties as well if you guys don't know about it just go here and if you guys are not reminding it and write here something like this so here you can see we have all the properties here we can use flexbox uh, grid layout and other properties as well we have a lot of values over here so for now we are going to write here display as block we are going to keep our display as block save it you can see there is no change now we are going to change the color we have already changed the color but let's change it once more here you can see the link and what we are going to do now is we are going to write here after color text align text align what we are going to do is we are going to write here center and let's see if there is any change okay there is no change as of now and now what we are going to do is we are going to write here just padding padding we will provide true properties for left right and top bottom let's say 14 pixels and 16 pixels and here you can see our navigation bar is almost done now what we are going to do is we are going to write here text decoration as none to remove these underlines and here we have all the three links of a navigation bar the third thing we are going to do is we are going to change the color or we can say the background color on hovering over these links so let's just write here dot nav space a which property we are going to use the hover property so we'll write here hover and just write over here background color as azure and color as what we can say blue save it and here you can see on taking our mouse cursor over any particular link this but that particular link is changing right the color the font color is changing to blue and the background color is changing to azure so we have azure over here that's why it's happening 
so yeah it's working totally fine as of now right so here you can see this is a header part this is the navigation bar we have now just do one thing if we write here margin as 15 pixels let's see what happens so here you can see the margin <coughs> and we are going to do one thing we are going to keep it the same we are going to change the margin for a header as 5 pixels save it and 5 pixels is pretty less to make you guys see the difference although the colors are different okay so we are going to write here 10 pixels and 0 fine save it and here you can see only the top and bottom has margin for the header part and for navigation bar what we are going to do is we are going to do the same we are going to keep the margin as 5 pixels and 0 save it and here you can see the navigation bar now looks different here is a header part here is a navigation bar so everything is fine for now we have used the hover property as well the third thing we have the third element we have on a what we can say website is content so we can place content in different ways we can either use one column we can use two columns or we can use three columns as well. so let's start with three columns and then we'll move on to one column and two columns there's just a small change and you guys will understand it pretty soon you will understand it so what we'll do is we'll move to the html section and here what we'll do is we'll write over here we'll create some content first so we'll write over here div class is equal to call let's say and inside this what we are going to do is we are going to use a heading column one save it and here you can see we have a heading now use a paragraph inside this and just write here lorem 25 save it okay we don't have to save it just write here lorem 25 press enter and here you can see we have a paragraph so it's done for now what we are going to do is we are going to add some more paragraphs fine copy it paste it here and paste it again we are going to use three columns so we'll write over here column two column three fine so we have three columns present right now we have the data for three columns we are going to style them we are going to place them on a web page in three columns like column one column two and column three so move to the css part and start writing the code here let's add a property over here first we'll write here not in the body part let's just put it on the whole web page fine things will remain the same in either way so we are writing over here box sizing so we are going to add the border box property you can see there is no changes of now now what we are going to do is we are going to style the header now not the header but the what we can say columns fine so columns play a vital role what we are going to do is we are going to write here the what we can say we are going to create three equal columns that floats next to each other fine so what we are going to do here is we are going to write here dot column dot column is the class or we can say column is the class we have used for every column right so we'll write over here float and we are going to write here left and then we are going to write here width of each column is going to be 33.33 percent save it and here you can see nothing changes as of now okay we haven't used the column class we have used the call class save it and here you can see we have three columns present here next to each other 33 percent of the browser's total window it's fine right then we'll write over here padding as 15 pixels save it and here you can see the columns they will okay just wait a minute we'll increase the size of uh, browser and here you can see it's working fine increase it like this it is responsive because what we have done here is we have set the width to 33.33 percent of the total width of a web page that's why they are responsive fine now what we are going to do is we are going to write here dot row and we are going to write here after property so we'll write over here after what content content is a property again content we are going to write here zero and 
display is going to be table and clear property we are going to write here as both fine so here you can see that it makes no change now what we are going to do is we are going to make it responsive but before that can we wish we have to add we have to see how we can make one or two columns as well right here for now we have three columns let's do one thing we are going to write here background color as I don't know if how it will look bleached almonds margin will also write 5 pixels and here you can see the three columns okay they are auto aligned now adding we have a left for now save it and here you can see make margin to 2 pixels margin is also less but still not working okay these two took let me just do one thing let me just remove the margin and we will write here padding again for now padding as 15 pixels save it and here you can see all the three so let's just do one thing what we are going to do is we are going to write here border as one pixel solid in nature or we can say dashed dashed in nature and black in color let's see so here you can see we have these three columns present on a web page it looks fine right you can see the difference now what we are going to do is we are going to write here dot nav not nav but dot call we are going to write here inside the column we have used okay so what we are going to do is we are going to change the color of our paragraph hover and just write here background color as yellow take your cursor and here you can see the background color changing so to make it look more distinct to you guys now what I am going to do is I am going to change the font color as well color we are going to put which color we can use is teal let's say so here you can see the color is changing for each column so we are done with the content as well now I'll show you guys how we can use two columns or a single column right here 50% divide the screen into two parts and just remove this div tag from here save it now so here you can see now we have only two columns similarly we can use a single column as well save it and just go back here and write here with as 100% and here you can see we only have one column now so this is how we can add content to a web page right let me just go back and just write here 33.33 with all the content save it and we have to save this as well now we have all the three columns now the last part we are left with is the footer part for footer part what we have to do is we have to add certain like the footer part stays at the bottom where we we write copyright and all these things so what we are going to do is we are going to write here div class is footer or foot and then we'll write over here inside paragraph f o o t e r footer and here you can see the footer is present so what we are going to do is we are going to style this footer now so it won't take too much of time so what we'll do is we'll move to the css part we'll write just write over here dot foot and just write here background color background color we are going to set any color of your choice so let's say we are writing over here aqua i guess this web page looks more colorful now so it depends on you guys how you guys can make your web page look more attractive to the user this time we are using these colors because I don't want you guys to get confused with a single color so that's why we are using a different color for each element present on a web page so what we are going to do next is we are going to write here we are going to made it make it a little more broader so we'll write over here 20 pixels and here you can see the footer margin we can also write as 5 pixels no not 5 pixels let's use 5 pixels and 0 save it 
and it's not working right now let's just write over here what we have to write we have to write text align just align the text at the center okay the text is aligned at the center margin will set as 5 pixels okay just use margin over here let's see if it's working or not 10 pixels and 0 save it okay the footer is visible behind the column so what we are going to do is we are going to use padding as 10 here 10 pixels right so here you can see this color is visible in the background there is a mistake I guess margin top let's make it save it now and it's not working as of now so what we are going to do is we are going to remove the margin property for now I'll get back to you guys on this and we are going to remove the margin property for columns as well save it now and it looks fine so this is the layout of our website now increase the size and here you can see this is the header part this is the navigation bar these are the contents so we have used three columns and this is the footer part which is present at the bottom of any web page so how to make it more responsive like to stack it over one another on increasing or decreasing the size of a browser window you can see it's working as of now but let's make it a little more responsive so what we are going to do is we are going to write here at the rate media and what we are going to do is we are going to write here screen and what we are going to do is we are going to write here max width I hope you guys are already aware of these properties and we have to write the value for max width as well 600 pixels let's write over here and we'll write over here this then we'll write dot call call is our class and then we'll write dot side comma dot call dot middle fine so we'll write over here like this width we are going to use 100 percent so it's already responsive and yeah <coughs> now what we are going to do is we are going to inspect elements from here here you can see the responsiveness and the columns are stacking over each other if you guys are not able to see it let me just show you this way so here you can see on increasing the size and if I decrease the size the links the navigation bar is also stacking over each other and all the links are stacked over each other at this particular point so it's not quite that visible but yeah it's visible fine so this is how we can create the layout of a website using CSS CSS is used to style that particular layout and we can place or we can say we can lay off different elements on a web page with the help of CSS so I hope you guys must have got this how CSS is used to create the layout of a website we have already been through uh, the CSS layouts where we have where we got to know about uh, CSS flexbox CSS grid layout and several other topics so I hope you guys are already aware though of those topics so give it a try and let us know in the comment section if you are facing any difficulties then we'll definitely help you guys so with that this is Kaushal signing off until next time thank you